Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So we're going to talk about a few things here. We're going to talk about the stock market. We're going to talk about Bitcoin and we're going to talk about silver. Let's start out with the stock market. This is the Dow 30 industrials and I've drawn in this fan pattern. I drew it out before on another chart. And this this type of chart pattern for me is uh, indicative of a, an eventual explosion one way or the other probably to the downside but we just don't know you can see that now the the levels that we're at here with the Dow the recent breakout here that we've really exceeded just about any bubble past that we've ever had if you look at this 1987 crash here you can see that that's just a blip on the radar screen now relative to uh, the moves that we've had in the market and that's not just percentage wise that's uh, that's also uh, I mean that's not just in raw numbers that's also percentage wise huge moves either way uh, you can see the financial crisis that we had uh, really didn't change the trend of things uh, so we're back on to that course we know they reflated everything we can see more of it when we look at, let's say, uh, the net. I'm sorry, the uh, the MCRI uh, PDFs, more research PDFs. This one gives you even a better view on the monthly Dow. You can see here is the little teeny tiny uh, blip from 1987 on the Dow, and now here's what we've done. Just an incredible uh, increase in the value of it and it's not just the Dow it's reflected in all of these others you can pull up the Russell 2000 index and you can see here 1987 again barely registers here's a financial crisis here we are going much much higher and uh, how high can we go well we can go very very high but what happens to inflation when we reach a ridiculous level that's going to be the big question we just don't know uh, if we do the comparison, you know that I like to do uh, the overlay of gold or silver with the Dow. And you can see here that we'll just do the uh, silver market in U.S. dollars. You can see when we do silver in U.S. dollars overlaid on top of the Dow that this area that I was predicting we would get the correction back into the norm which is these two going together uh, failed and we got this huge rally and silver is kind of going sideways so I was fully expecting this to come down this to come up and us to come back to some normalcy you can see that normalcy uh, except for this run-up in silver they they have tended to trend along with each other it makes sense if you think about it because the Dow is supposed to be an industrial commodity index now it's I mean an industrial stock index it doesn't really reflect industry anymore because we don't really have the traditional industry that we used to have but still there is manufacturing in there and there are things that are directly related to GDP and and the growth in the economy you would expect that if we have significant money printing that it would be reflected in both of these but it's not being reflected in the precious metals and again that's due to manipulation I'm gonna cover that when we look at this latest from Bix Weir but before we do that I wanted to look at Bitcoin now uh, Bitcoin is just coming and challenging this is a chart from Poloniex you can see that Bitcoin is just starting to challenge the highs that we had that came in around about a thousand eighty or roughly that and we just got to a thousand seventy today you can see we're starting to turn down now this point here uh, keep this date in mind this is February 9th probably February 8th to 9th and this is the point in time when the Chinese if you remember the story I told you the Chinese basically outlawed margin on their exchanges and because trading was free on those three major Chinese exchanges, they were no longer left. They, they were just uh, making money on margin. So the 
amount of money it takes to borrow to get the margin and and the interest rate on that. That's how they, those exchanges were surviving. So there weren't trading fees. Now they've instituted trading fees and uh, we're going to listen to Bix Weir on silver, but Bix Weir pointed out we're kind of in opposite camps here. Bix Weir is, is believing that the Chinese are cleaning up Bitcoin, whereas I don't believe that that's what's behind it. I believe that they're actually trying to suppress the price of Bitcoin. Uh, his argument is that they're trying to standardize these exchanges, that they intend to reopen them. And my argument is that, no, they're trying to suppress the price of Bitcoin. And their concern is uh, making it so that you can't, uh, it's not that you can't buy it, but you can't get what you buy. So if you think about uh, what they did in the late 70s with the Hunt Brothers, uh, you remember that basically they outlawed the buying of silver on the futures market. This would be equivalent to that, uh, except it would be to say, yeah, you can still buy silver. You just can't ever take delivery of the silver that you bought. So effectively, all you can do is buy and sell paper. And uh, that's what they've done with Bitcoin in China. So we've got a 30-day wait here. And that's going to bring us to roughly March 9th. And I'm thinking that they're not going to lift that ban and then we could see a, a collapse in the price of bitcoin in china that doesn't mean we'll see a collapse of the price of bitcoin around the world we may see an inversion where the chinese market goes down to say 200 to 300 dollars of bitcoin and the rest of the world goes up to two to three thousand because there's no way to arbitrage that if they won't allow you to remove your bitcoins from the exchange you could go into china and buy your cheap bitcoins for two or three hundred dollars but they won't let you transfer them off the exchange so what's the point so we're going to know roughly around march 9th whether bix Weir is correct or whether i'm correct now let's listen to this video here this one's going into comex silver it's kind of interesting to see the same sort of things being done by the powers that be to stop Bitcoin that they've already done with silver and, and Bix Weir documents that really well in this video. So I'm gonna play a little bit of it. So going forward, what do we know? In 2016, the average daily volume of COMEX silver futures and options contracts rose 41% from 57,000 contracts per day to 80,000 contracts every single day. In 2016, this is very interesting, silver mine production fell 3% from 899 million to 866 million ounces. So you have a falling mine production, falling amount of silver coming into the market, but for some reason the electronic silver contracts had to rise 41%, huge rise throughout the year of 2016. So let's do the math. 80,000 contracts every day. One contract is worth 5,000 ounces of, of electronic silver, which is equal to 400 million silver ounces per day in future and options were traded. Now these are just a handful of banks trading these back and forth, mind you. These aren't your average Joe Schmo walking down to his, uh, his coin store to buy a few rounds. These are just the banks rigging the price, trading it back and forth and back and forth. So of those 400 million ounces every day, you times that by 252 trading days in the year, and that gives you a nice round total of 100 billion, 800 million ounces of electronic silver that were traded on the COMEX last year. In a world where mine production fell 3% to 866 million ounces, for some reason they thought it was necessary to hedge with 100, over 100 billion ounces. Criminal, criminal. Here's how criminal it is. In the history of humanity, only 50 to 60 billion ounces of silver, physical silver, has ever been mined in history. And yet last year they traded 100 billion in futures and option contract for silver. None of that, very, very, very small amount of that is actually used for hedging. Now, here's the other thing. Everybody talks about the, the physical to electronic ratio. Uh, Jeffrey Christian in the CFTC meeting said it was about 100 to 1. That is completely ridiculous. The amount of physical silver 
in the Comex warehouse is 30 million ounces. 30 million ounces. That's all there is in registered physical silver in the Comex warehouse. During the course of the year, over 100 billion ounces of silver were traded. Just doing the math off the top of my head, that is a ratio of around 3,350 to 1. It's not 100 to 1. 3,350 to 1 electronic silver trades happened in 2016 compared to the 30 million ounces that were in inventory. And here's the kicker. These days, because of all the losses that were taken in the early 2000s when silver went up to 50 bucks and everybody had to close out their hedge positions, very few silver miners had hedged their production. The only ones that do are the criminals like Barrett Gold and Frenzanelli and uh, anybody associated with uh, George Soros or uh, Carlos Slim. So yeah, it is just a fraud beyond fraud beyond fraud. And the interesting thing is they had to ramp up the fraud last year so much that they had to rise the amount of electronic silver sold from 57,000 contracts to 80,000 contracts, which is a hundred over 100 billion ounces of electronic silver just to control the price of silver. That's what I've been saying for some time. And we've seen that demonstrated in the silver volume graph when we pull that up. And we know that as things get tighter, as... Uh, there's less silver mined and as there's more demand then it makes perfect sense that the powers that be are going to have to spend more time manipulating the price uh, using their paper contracts than they would have in the past and that's exactly what we're seeing I'm not sorry I'm not getting the volume up here um, so it's not it's not allowing me to show the volume but the volume has spiked tremendously and uh, it, it's been oh that's because I'm on the Dow hold on so I've shown before the huge spiking in the volume and it makes sense if you're going to manipulate something then if, if the primary vehicle you're going to be using to manipulate it is trading fake uh, contracts on it back and forth then if the underlying physical market is not responding to your manipulation or if you have what we have here as he's pointed out that there's very few hedgers why would you hedge uh, hedging is basically selling ahead of time just in case the price declines i don't see how you could expect too much of a price decline when you look at the price history that we've had so a very very small percentage of the people who are trading these contracts back and forth are hedgers. That means they're speculators. That means they're the big Wall Street banks. And that means it's the manipulators. 99.99% of silver volume on the COMEX is price manipulation. So as I pointed out, we may be seeing the same thing going on in Bitcoin. We'll have to wait and see what happens uh, with, in 30 days with what I believe is the Chinese attempt to manipulate the price of Bitcoin. Now Jennifer pointed out a very interesting point as to what would happen to all those Bitcoins if the Chinese decided to not re, uh, take off this restriction and uh, just kept it on forever. What would happen? Well, the price would collapse and they'd have to sell the Bitcoins on the exchange and all those bitcoins would be left on the exchange. What percentage of bitcoin is on those three major Chinese exchanges? We don't know. We know the margin volume was tremendous, but we don't know how many coins are there. I suspect that at least 50% of the bitcoins in the world are on those three exchanges, and it may be as high as 90%. Now, if they do that, then in effect, the Chinese government could end up in control of 90% of the bitcoins in the world. And that might be exactly what they want. That could be a crazy scenario. And we'll talk to you next time.